It is the night of your cup overflowing with the power of the Lord in Jesus' name. I'm looking at Acts of the Apostles chapter 6. Let's see some other people that had this power of the Holy Ghost in them. Acts of the Apostles chapter 6, read from verse 3. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men upon a support, full of the Holy Ghost, who and wisdom, whom we may appoint to this business. You see, in the early church, even distributing food, you needed the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost power, Holy Ghost anointing, Holy Ghost unction, Holy Ghost fire within them, Holy Ghost wisdom, Holy Ghost understanding, Holy Ghost illumination. They said, we want to distribute food to these people that need food. And we need seven men of all this report. That means they were sage. That means they were righteous. That means they were sanctified. And because they were transparently righteous, honest, he said, then you give them to us. Not only that, not only that they are saved, not only that they are honest and transparent and sanctified, they must have the Holy Ghost. They, they must be full of the Holy Ghost. will appoint them unto this business. And when they said that, then they began to choose. Here is Stephen. Here is Philip. Here is so and so. Here is so and so. Look at verse 5. And the same pleased the, the whole multitude. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and full of the Holy Ghost. You see that? Sage sanctified baptized in the holy ghost and all these people were ready tonight you are ready i said tonight you are ready the experience of the power of the holy ghost the experience of the might of the holy ghost look at verse 8 and look at the consequence in the life of that stephen it says and stephen full of faith and of and power the great wonders and miracles among the people was stephen an apostle I said, was he an, uh, an apostle? No, but he did miracles. I'm telling your own day of doing miracle has come. Your own day of healing the sick has come. And your own day of delivering the oppressed, it has come in Jesus' name. You know, when anytime you say amen, I know when you really, really, really inside your heart believe what to say amen to. When you believe small, you say amen. When you believe more, you say amen. When you believe really, really from your heart, then I know the kind of amen you say. I say that you begin to work miracles in Jesus' name. Uh, look at it will be sold unto you in your life. It says, and Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. Let's look at chapter 11. Chapter 11, I'm reading there from verse 22. You see, it wasn't only the apostles, all the 120. They received the Holy Ghost. And the people that were coming into the kingdom later, after the first 120, they also had the power of the Holy Ghost. That's what I'm saying. That you have come after, you have come after now, you are saved. You have come after now, you are sanctified. You have come after now, you are honest. You have come after now, you are transparent. And I'm saying that tonight, that promise is unto you. And to your children, and to them that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Thank God you are here tonight, the night of power, the night of fire, the night of the Holy Ghost. You'll get your portion before you go in Jesus' name. I'm looking at it from Acts of the Apostles chapter 11. Acts chapter 11, I'm reading from verse 22. Then tidings of these things came unto the ears of the church which was in Jerusalem. And the saint forth Barnabas that he should go as far as Antioch. This Barnabas who when he came and had seen the grace of God, he was glad and exhorted them all that with purpose of heart they would cleave unto the Lord, for he was a good man. I'm telling you, before you can have this Holy Ghost, you must be saved. The Lord must take all the evil out of your life out of your heart, in your inner man, in your inner heart, in the holy place inside your heart, he must take away every appearance of evil. For this man, we are told in verse 24, he was a good man, saved, sanctified, purified, and cleansed in the blood of the Lamb. And it says, I'm full of the Holy Ghost, and of faith, and much people was added unto the Lord. You see that experience of being saved, that makes you a new creature. 
and then when you're sanctified and prepares your heart and purifies your heart it prepares you for the coming in of the holy spirit and that holy spirit is coming to that holy heart sanctified heart righteous heart tonight in jesus name I'm going to point number two. When the Holy Ghost came upon them, they had experienced the Holy Ghost. Baptized in the Holy Ghost. Filled with the Holy Ghost. Empowered by the Holy Ghost. Energized by the Holy Ghost. And now, if the power has come, we use that power. We exercise that power. We express that power. And we manifest that power. It was now for them, after the Holy Ghost had come, that they will exercise the power. That they will manifest the power and they will use that power for the winning of souls into the kingdom point number two then exercising the possessed baptism of the holy ghost i'm going to turn to the old testament yes i understand i know that the old testament people they are waiting for the new covenant people who baptize the holy ghost but they are the measure of the holy spirit and that measure of the holy spirit that came upon them what did they do with that what did they manifest when they had that measure of the Holy Spirit? In Micah chapter 3 verse 8. Micah chapter 3 verse 8. But truly I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. Truly I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. Truly I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. That's going to be your experience tonight after the prayer. I said that will be your experience after the prayer. You say, surely and truly, without any shadow of doubt, I, so and so, I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord and of judgment and of might to declare unto Jacob his transgression and to Israel his sin, the boldness to declare, the conviction to declare, the courage to declare, and to stand erect and stand firm before the people and to declare their sin unto them so as to win them unto the Lord. It comes that kind of courage, that kind of conviction, and that kind of certainty. It comes when the Holy Ghost comes and fills you up. Truly I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord and of judgment and of mine to declare to Jacob his transgression and to Israel his sin. Let's look at another Old Testament character. We're looking at Second Samuel chapter 23 verse 2 second samuel chapter 23 and i'm reading there from verse 2 second samuel chapter 23 and we're looking at verse 2 the spirit of the lord capital s spirit of the lord holy spirit holy ghost the spirit of the lord spake by me and his word was in my tongue you see when the holy ghost came, came upon david then he said the spirit filled me enlightened me taught me and because of that his word was in my tongue because the spirit of the lord spake by me let's come to the new testament but we're reading about the old testament people now in the new testament in first in second peter chapter one second peter chapter one you see what it says about those old testament characters all those prophets, all those servants of God in the Old Testament, how they were endued with power too. How they were filled with the Holy Ghost too. How the unction, the anointing of the Holy Ghost came upon them to do what they ought to do. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 21. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men i told you you must be saved you must be sanctified you must be holy righteous within and without and loud in your in your life in your family holy in your place of work holy on your farm holy in the market holy in the church holy among the congregation of the people of god holy holy men of god speak as they were moved tell me tell me out loud as they were moved by by the holy ghost they were righteous they were saved they were holy they were sanctified and then the holy ghost moved them and propelled them to do the work they ought to do this is your own time acts of the apostles chapter 4 
exercising the possessed baptism in the Holy Spirit. Acts of the Apostles chapter 4. I read in verse 31. And when they had prayed, the place was shaking where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Every time it's all of them being filled. Not that some people are filled and some are not filled. Not that the women are filled and the men are not filled. Not that the men are filled and the women are not filled. Not that the adults are filled and the young people are not filled. It says and we're all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they speak the word of God with boldness. When the Holy Ghost came upon them, the power of the Holy Ghost, the fire of the Holy Ghost, when that fire power came upon them, the result, the consequence is that they speak the word of God with boldness. Look at verse 33, and with great power, not just small power, not just a minor power, not just a kind of intangible power. It says with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all. It will happen to you. I'm looking at Acts of the Apostles now, chapter 6 again. Acts chapter 6. Because when the Holy Ghost comes, you're not going to remain idle and dormant and lazy and inactive. It pushes into action. It propels you into action. When the fire of the Holy Ghost comes to your life, you'll not be able to stay still. You'll not be able to stand still. You'll be moving forward. You'll be evangelizing. You'll be praying. You'll be preaching. You'll be doing what the Lord has called you to do. Because He makes us do the will of God in a practical way. And will bring souls into the kingdom. The time has come again. You will bring souls into the kingdom. Acts of the Apostles chapter 6 verse 8. And Stephen, full of faith and power did great wonders and miracles among the people. Then there arose certain of the synagogue, which is called the synagogue of the Libertines, and the Cyrenians, and the Alexandrians, and of them of Cilicia, and of Asia, disputing with Stephen. Look at verse 10. And they were not able to resist the wisdom that's the wisdom of the Holy Ghost and the Spirit. That's the Spirit that came upon him because of the Holy Ghost by which he spake. They were not able to resist him. They were not able to conquer him. They were not able to oppose him to the point he'll shut up. You'll not shut up anymore. The Spirit of the Lord will speak through you in Jesus' name. And then chapter 8, let's look at the friend of Stephen. Because when they chose those seven, they chose Stephen, they chose Philip. And Philip was very much next to, next to Stephen. And see what happened in chapter 8 verse 5. And then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. Remember, Philip had the Holy Ghost too. Because all those seven men of honest report that to be full of faith and full of power and full of the Holy Ghost. And here we find Philip that he was full of the Holy Ghost and wasn't just staying somewhere, hiding somewhere. When persecution arose in Jerusalem, he was one of the people that went out and he went to the city of Samaria and see what happened. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. I'm telling you that when that Holy Ghost come upon you, comes upon you, the power to work miracles will come upon you too. When you pray, miracles will happen. When you intercede, miracles will happen. And when you speak to people, you will touch them with the miracle power of the Holy Ghost in, the, in your life in Jesus' name. But six again, and the people with one accord give heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For clear spirits crying with loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with buses, and that were and that were lame were healed, and there was great joy in that city. The time has come. There was great joy in that city. In your community where you came from, because of the power of the Holy Ghost coming upon your life tonight, you go there like a fire branch. 
and all those places where sicknesses and suffering and evil spirits have been hiding. The moment you arrive like this, you say, I'm full of the spirit of the living God and I'm going to manifest that power and then all those sicknesses will begin to vanish in Jesus' name. That same, that same chapter 8, look at verse 26 and begin to see some supernatural things happening in the life of this Philip and the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip saying, Arise, talking to this man, he said, Arise and go toward the south unto the way that goes down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is the desert. And then he says, and he arose and went. You see, the spirit, when the spirit comes upon us, there's that implicit obedience to the voice of the spirit. There's that immediate obedience to the voice of the spirit. You know why? Because all the inertia, that is all the all the things that make us just you know stay dense there. And when we're hearing the word of God, we say, Yes, I know your will, I know your word, I know what you want me to do. But the energy to do it, the enthusiasm to do it, and the power to and the zeal to do it, that's what I know that when the Holy Ghost comes immediately the lord is speaking to you like this there's a springboard inside you it's like uh, under your feet there's some springs and then you're springing you're sprinting and you're going because the holy ghost gives that readiness and that zeal and that enthusiasm and that excitement to want to obey the lord immediately and he arose and he went in verse 27 and behold a man of ethiopia and a eunuch of great authority under candace under Candace the queen of the Ethiopians who had the charge of her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship. He was returning and sitting in his chariot. He read Isaiah the prophet and then the spirit of the Lord the spirit said unto Philip you see every moment you, when you are filled with the Holy Ghost you are not just be taking decisions and going this way and going that way without any direction from heaven heaven will begin to control your movement will begin to control your attitude will begin to control the direction which you go and everywhere you go success will be waiting for you anywhere you go the consequence of the spirit leading the, because the spirit will never lead into failure the spirit will never lead into I, I don't know why i'm here i don't know what i'm doing here when the spirit of god is leading he leads you to the right point you are going to bear fruit you are going to bear fruit and it says in that verse 29 then the spirit said unto philip go near and join thyself to this chariot and philip ran see that to him and heard him reach the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? Do you understand this? Because Philip did not even, he didn't prepare any outline for this. He didn't know where the man will be reading the Bible. What if he's reading a difficult passage? There's no difficult passage that the Holy Ghost will not interpret. Because it's the Holy Ghost, the author of this Bible, Old Testament, New Testament, the author is the Holy Spirit. Because it says,